Here we perform ERCP on a 37-year-old lady with known PSC. She was admitted because of pruritus and elevated biochemical parameters. Remember, before we start any endoscopic intervention in PSC, we should administer antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent procedure-related sepsis. In PSC, the biliary tree is best explored with a balloon catheter to obtain a selected occlusion cholangiogram of the different biliary segments. This is because the high resistance of intrahepatic fibrotic stenosis impairs filling with contrast medium. After halfway inflation of the balloon at the level of the bifurcation, we contrast the biliary tree with gentle pressure. Keep in mind to limit contrast injection to an absolute minimum to avoid post-procedural cholangitis. During injection, the catheter is slowly pulled back to allow filling of the common bile duct. This contrasted curved duct is the cystic duct that branches off the common bile duct at an unusually high level. Look, without inflation of the balloon, large amounts of contrast medium just flow back into the common hepatic duct and eventually fill the gallbladder. This is because of the high resistance of the sclerotic bile duct in PSC. After inflation of the balloon, an occlusion cholangiogram of the right hepatic duct reveals the typical features of PSC that are nearly pathognomonic. We see multifocal strictures, focal dilations, and thinning of the intrahepatic bile ducts. Have a close look at the biliary tree. We see multiple strictures, but also a paucity of intrahepatic bile ducts with typical thinning in the periphery. During slow withdrawal of the halfway blocked balloon catheter, we identify the left hepatic duct with a long segment stenosis. This dominant stricture has a length of 25 mm and appears somehow distorted and destructed. It is virtually impossible to distinguish between a malignant stenosis and non-neoplastic PSC strictures as they have the same macroscopic appearance. While short intrahepatic stenoses are good indications for dilation, strictures with a length of more than 15 mm have a rather poor outcome after endoscopic treatment. However, considering the new onset of clinical symptoms, we give it a try. After exchange of the hydrophilic guide wire with a biliary wire guide, a dilation balloon with 30 mm length is inserted. The markings on the balloon catheter identify the proximal and distal ends of the balloon. The balloon is positioned right within the stricture and inflated to 4 mm. The stenosis is indeed very tight and during dilation for 60 seconds. Here we see the contrast medium within the balloon. After dilation repeated, contrast injection shows no verifiable response to treatment, although the stricture appears more smooth. At this point, we decide to finish the procedure today and proceed to dilation up to 6 millimeters if clinical symptoms do not improve during follow-up.